bothers me. You know what I'm saying? Resnick's stepmother turned her head and looked at the boy. You know, I don't know if you're real, and I hope that you are real, but you're not real to me. She repeated that last line, twisting and scraping the words like dull daggers against sharpening stones. You're not real to me, to me, to me, to me, to me. Resnick sank a little, his eyes scanning the ground. Then he went outside to wait for the bus. After school, Resnick decided to visit his grandfather. He loved to hear the old man's stories. He loved everything about him, his voice, his deep, deliberate breaths. And most of all, he loved that his grandfather laughed constantly when he spoke. He approached the door and opened it slowly. I'm totally disabled. Resnick could hear his grandfather's right voice coming from the kitchen. At the hip. If you send and I can get it. Grandfather took a deep breath through the plastic tube under his nose. <laughs> that means I have to go out and get the mail because of my wife. She said, I don't know what'll happen. Ding. Resnick assumed his grandfather was placing another order over the phone. He liked to buy all of his things from the same companies and always on the sly. Grandmother resented the monotony of this incessant shopping. Enough with all the QVCing, the JC Pennying, she would say. It's got to stop, Rupert. Pappy hadn't noticed Resnick come in and was getting a little off track. I've gone and donated blood already. He paused. <laughs> I'm on oxygen. <laughs> After another longer silent stretch, Grandfather was back at the matter at hand. How long does it take to arrive in the mail? Bresnik eased into the next room pausing for a moment to put his hand on the cool green tank connecting the plastic tube to his grandfather's nostrils. He unmuted the television. Ding! That morning, Resnick had been trying to explain. He'd been whispering things into his stepmother's ears. Before her cold, cruel outburst, what he'd been trying to tell her is that he is Resnick, and that he is real, as real as any ghost robot boy could be, which is very is real, real if you needed to ask. Needed to ask. Quite real, real indeed if you needed to ask. Ding. Still, his stepmother paced the kitchen ticking off counting fingers with her left and right hands. You know, I don't know if you're real. You as a human being are real. But I don't know what you're representing if that is real. You know what I'm saying? The wolf on her oversized gray t-shirt seemed to almost growl at that. The small birds patterned gently on her moo-moo underneath chirped a few lines. It was a sad song they sang. Ding. And so it was for the time. And so they both sat and watched the television people mouthing this thing or that. It was always muted, but with so much other house noise, you wouldn't have noticed much. Stepmother drank her crazy, crazy juice and Resnick pretended to file his nails. Ding. It wasn't long before Resnick drifted off into another daydream. This time, he was waiting beside a very busy street. A man approached him and started talking. Hey, just a walking. I think I'm um, you know, Resnick couldn't quite make out what all this jabber was about, and so, in his mind, he asked. 
At Resnick's apparent lack of understanding, the man got a little frustrated. Just then, the man grabbed Resnick by the arm and darted across the street, nearly causing them both to be hit by oncoming cars. Resnick hovered higher above the man now, forcing him to ballerina toes as he leapt and paused, leapt and paused. To Resnick, the dotted yellow lines were floating logs in a four-lane pond. Resnick felt more than a little green, and the drooling lunatic was still clutching at his wrists when Resnick was jarred out of the dream by his stepmother's recycled rantings. I don't know if you're real. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that is real. Of course, this was nothing new. And so he sat there, continuing to pretend to clip his nails. Thank you.